Welcome back. Particle kinematics is about the geometry of the motion of particles and bodies in space. Kinematics is part of dynamics, and the other part of dynamics is kinetics. And kinetics is about the relationship between forces acting on bodies, their masses, and the resulting motions. Today we're going to focus on particle kinematics, though some of the ideas that we introduce we won't really need until we get to continuum mechanics. Now we'll consider three types of motion. A rectilinear motion, which means motions in a straight line, or essentially one-dimensional motions. Curvilinear motion, which means motions in three-dimensional space. And angular motion, which are also curvilinear motions in three-dimensional space, but represented by radii and angles. So let's start by reviewing position, displacement, and velocity. So the point P at time t is moving so that it's at point P prime at time t plus delta t. Its position at point P is denoted by the position vector capital X and at time t plus delta t by position vector little x. The displacement vector u is the difference between little x and big x, and for small displacements we'll label this delta x. Therefore, the velocity vector v is the limit as delta x tends to zero of delta x over delta t, which is dx dt, or x dot. So here's the velocity vector, which is tangent to the point of the arc of the motion at point P at time T. Now we can define acceleration. So again, at time T we have point P, at time T plus delta T, the particles at point P prime, the velocity vector at time T is V, and at time T plus delta T is V plus delta V. The position vector is little x at P, and the velocity vector is v, so the acceleration vector a is the limit as delta t tends to zero of delta v over delta t, which is dv dt, or v dot, or x double dot. So for this motion, the acceleration vector is shown in red. Note that the acceleration vector has components tangent to the motion and normal to the motion. Now, often in kinematics, we have to solve problems for velocity and displacement by integrating the, an expression for acceleration that we often solve for, and if it's a problem in kinetics, using forces. So let's consider the 1D rectilinear case where x, v, and a now reduce to scalars, the, if you like, the x component in a one-dimensional motion. So in the case when a is a function of t, then a of t is v dv dt, which means dv equals a dt. So if we want to integrate this for velocity, then the integral between v naught and v of dv would be the integral between 0 and t of a of t d with respect to t. Now if a is a function of x, then again we can make use of the fact that a is equal to dv dt and v equals dx dt. And if we compute v dv and expand that using the chain rule, we would get v dv dx dx, which would be v dv dt dt dx dx. But dt dx is 1 over v, so that cancels with v leaving us dv dt, which is a dx. So integrating this, we would get that the velocity of v is the integral from v naught to v of v dv is equal to the integral from x naught to x of a of x dx. So this is when we have acceleration as a function of x. If we have acceleration as a function of v, we can do something similar. Again, we make use of the fact that dv dt is equal to a, now a function of v. 
which gives us that dv over a of v is equal to dt, and integrating that gives us that the integral from v0 to v of dv over a of v is equal to the integral from t0 to t of dt. Or alternatively, we can make use of the fact that dv dt equals dv dx times dx dt, which equals v dv dx, and integrate this to obtain that the integral from x0 to x of dx equals the integral from v0 to v of v dv over a of x. So these are some useful ways to make use of the definitions of this velocity and acceleration to integrate accelerations to obtain velocities and positions for different problems.